respect around the world. That's why, you know, some of us talk about, well, I don't know if we can handle a black president right now. It might set the movement back. And people say, what are you talking about might set the movement back? Because of our reputation. We can't have a black man ahead of imperialism. We can't have a black man sending troops to Africa to take Africa. That'll set the movement back. So, well, you know, uh, we gotta be careful with that stuff. But the point we're trying to make is this. We have respect that you don't even realize, that, that you don't even know that we have. I'm talking about African Americans. We got respect around the world because of our culture of resistance. Our culture of resistance. There was an article in India, a brother, an Indian brother, you know, East Indian brother. He started a movement called the Dalit Panthers. Now in India, they have a situation where the people in the bottom are called like the Dalits or like sometimes the untouchables. Very, it's very racist. And so this brother was called, they said the Dalit, they call them Dalits, the Dalit Panthers. And so the interviewer said, the Dalit Panthers, does that have anything to do with the Black Panther Party of, in Oakland, California? Have anything to that? He said, definitely, definitely. They were inspired by the Black Panthers in Oakland. See, you might think that, that people will follow us and just singing and dancing, or styles. That's what they wanted you to think. They want you to think that people will only follow us in singing, dancing, styles, and so on and so forth. It's way deeper than that. Way deeper. But they ain't gonna let you know that. It's way deeper than that. That's one of the reasons why we have to internationalize our understanding. Dr. King, brothers and sisters, left us a legacy that we can draw upon and begin again this movement, this struggle. And it's gotten so bad, brothers and sisters, and my ASU brothers and sisters know it too. It's gotten so bad. I mentioned this before, some of you may have were here, some of you weren't here. Remember when Snoop Dogg came to that uh, program with two sisters on a leash? Snoop Dogg came to a program, like, you know, award program, with two black women on a leash. And it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't start a commotion or anything. You know why? Because that's how lost we are. That's how lost we are. We, are we, we have become so lost that that which is crazy, we don't recognize as being crazy, right? Well, guess what? We gotta wake up. We have to wake up. And the thing that we have on our side is we have the truth on our side. Because no, no matter how false something is, no matter how much of a lie that it is, they can put it on TV, so on and so forth. When truth comes, as we're taught in Quran, when truth comes, it smashes the brains out of falsehood. So all you have to do is put truth up there, and falsehood goes away. It's like light and darkness. The only way that you have darkness is the absence of light. As soon as light comes on the scene, darkness can exist. As soon as truth comes on the scene, falsehood cannot exist. And so you have to wake up and realize that some of the things that they're teaching you as young people, it's false, y'all. It's false. And you have to recognize it as being false. Even if you continue to do it, you must recognize it as being false. That's the first step in waking up. So now, that's your mission. And don't feel bad because you, you, you are like, you feel outnumbered. Because a, a lot of our people would rather party than listen to the truth. That's how we've been indoctrinated. You can fill up a party, party be packed. But when it's time to sit down and discuss some issues, right? You don't get as many people. Well, that's what we're dealing with. But keep this in mind. In American history, before there was a period of upheaval, social upheaval, there was always a chill period before that. There was always a chill period before that. The Roaring Twenties. The Roaring Twenties, that's why they, they were partying. The Roaring Twenties, it led to the Thirties, right? Depression and so on and so forth, and the movements that sprung up there. Right? The 50s were supposed to be Ozzy and Harriet 50s, right? And then the 60s jumped off. So whenever there was a period of social upheaval, what preceded it was a period in which people were just like, like just like out the lunch. We weren't, weren't thinking about nothing, right? All just wanted to have fun, just wanted to party, and so on and so forth. So you may feel like a minority right now, but the way things are going, brothers and sisters, everybody's feeling the pinch. Everybody's feeling the pinch. The middle class is feeling the pinch. The poor is always feeling the pinch. The people of color are always feeling the pinch. But people are feeling the pinch. The rich are getting richer, and the poor is getting poorer. Dr. King talked about that. The gap, that's a recipe for social evil. When you have more and more rich people and more and more poor people, the gap is widening. America has 371 billionaires. If you're a multimillionaire today in America, that ain't nothing. 
They got almost 400 billionaires in America today. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. That's a recipe for social upheaval. 